Welcome back to another MS 548 um, program. This particular one is taking faces and facial recognition and using Microsoft Azure um, Cognitive Services and particularly the Face API in order to send an image to the service, have it analyze it for um, some data that we'll show in a little while, and then return those results in JSON uh, data, and allows us to pull that apart and classify the picture and classify the emotion based on that. So the, uh, the particular libraries that we're using in this one, obviously we're using JSON, we're using request matplotlib, and that allows us to plot uh, things in Python. It allows us to take the image and overlay the bounding box on top of that, as well as our labels. We're using the uh, PIL, which is the Python Imaging Library. And then finally, this uh, uh, Python IO module, which allows us to input and output files. Uh, we've got these two that I've got commented out right now that I eventually may want to add a better front end to this, but for now, we're uh, that's where we're at. So, what we're doing in this uh, folder is we're setting this the the folder that the program runs as the uh, absolute uh, path, so that I can then later just pass in the shortened uh, image paths and and still get my file accepted. Um, I'm using matplotlib uh, RC parameters interactive because that's what allows us to open up the plot window. Otherwise, it would just show up in, in my IDE. Uh, this is spider. It would allow it to show up in the plots uh, section. I've got two different ways that I can load files right now. I've got uh, image source local or URL, and I can toggle between those by simply commenting out the one I'm not using to make it a little bit easier. I also kept the image paths at the front of the file so that anyone who wants to change that can do so pretty easily. This next uh, line is our Microsoft Face API endpoint. So that's where my programs would go to, and, and particularly this one, would go to in order to send and receive data. The uh, parameters section are all of the items that we want to send with our request. So we're going to tell it what detection model we want to use, which in this case is number one. We're going to return all the facial attributes, with, which include age, gender, head pose, smile, facial hair, glasses, emotion, hair, makeup. Is the face occluded in any way? Do they have on accessories? Is the image blurred? Uh, exposure, noise, and then um, and that's it. If the image, the, this whole section is telling it what to do in the case of whether we have local or URL. So if it's local, we're going to open the, the image and read it in. We're going to send that uh, as a uh, basically data stream uh, to, our, to our API using this key. Now this key will only work for mine and my particular um, endpoint. So you'd have to add your own. If you're not using local and you're using URL, we're going to use the URL lib request and we're going to open that and read it. And once again, we're going to send that um, with the uh, key. And on either of these, we're going to get a response back. We're going to get, um, or sorry, we're going to, to get our response, we're going to post the request using the API URL, which we've talked about, the parameters, the headers, and then finally, what data are we sending to it? If we don't do any of those, I'm just having the program ask us to use a valid source. And uh, I think later on, if we did a menu, I would allow somebody to either input a URL into a, into a box or do a drop down to open a file. This particular uh, print is just to print the JSON result that we get back and then uh, so I can see the raw data. Once we have that, we're going to basically read each of these specific uh, 
um, attributes into a variable. So we're going to get the inside this uh, array in the first key we've got facial attributes and under that we've got gender so on each of these you can see I've kind of had to call them or parse it out by the nested way that they were stored now we're the things we're getting here is we're getting gender age and emotion the way that the API handles emotion is it gives us a percent out of a hundred that it's likely to be that emotion so there's some emotions or some facial expressions which might look like the equivalent of a smile and contempt if it's like a sarcastic look. Um, so we might get a mix. And so what I'm trying to do on this next one is I'm trying to figure out, uh, first of all, enter these all into an array. And then I find the max value of emotion. So whichever one is the most prevalent is the one that I'm using in this in this program and uh, so there you go that's all of the different ones we could possibly get and I've done them in the order that they're in the array uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually using that gender ID where we're making it's a string so we're calling the string and putting that in a variable and then we identify which emotion it is this next section is the bounding box for the facial recognition of where that face actually is. So what I've done is I'm taking it out of the rectangle, face rectangle, which is sent back by Microsoft, and I'm basically mirroring it into my own variable. So face rectangle top would be bounding box top, left, left, width, and height. And then I'm putting all those into a B box array, bounding box array, appending each one in. And then just for uh, the purposes of doing quality control checks on what's going on, I print out the gender and age and finally what the bounding box looks like. So I can kind of figure out if everything's working the way it should. In this next section, what I begin doing is I begin plotting the image uh, into the matplotlib. And so the first thing I do is I, I call a variable or I put within this image variable, call the image open function and read the data as bytes. I print out the height and width of the image and uh, it's just to get an idea of the size of it because there are some restrictions within Microsoft Azure as to whether or not it's the right size. So you do get an error message saying image not large enough, but then I did this so I could see how large the image actually is. In this particular section, just to be very clear because we've got a lot of different um, X and Y coordinates involved, I create two variables, which is the top label position X and Y, and then the bottom position label position X and Y. And that makes it easier later, as you'll see. I plot the image out. Um, I show the image, and then I've got a, I call this ID text. That's going to be what's at the top label, and it's going to be gender plus the age estimation. The emotion text is going to be, and I need to, fix that. Okay, later on I do say identified emotion. So what I'm doing is I'm no longer using it. I'm actually just directly using it. So this is actually no longer needed because I'm not putting the emotion text in there. I'm directly calling this identified emotion, which we already have. So on, uh, the, on the origin, that's going to be the origin of the bounding box. And the way it's defined is the origin is bounding box 1, which is going to be left and top. 
So it's your X position and Y position. The next one is going to be the rectangle that I make for the bounding box. Uh, and you can see we're not filling it. How thick is the line? It's color red. And then where's the origin and where are its width and height? So we're using those other two. Finally, these last two are just the annotations. Um, I'm using the matplotlib annotation function, which allows me to give it an X and Y coordinate, um, how I want to align it, the color, weight, and uh, background color. And there's a lot of other things you can do. Uh, one of the others is a font size. The only problem that I found with that is if I have a uh, varied sizes of images and I set a font size, those labels get bigger or smaller and it looks kind of messy. So I've, uh, I've left it alone. So for this first demonstration, we're going to use, um, we're going to use the local image source. And in this case, my local uh, image path is this sad one. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And we'll talk about the inputs and what we get. Okay, so you can see at the bottom here, we have gotten a lot of um, detailed data that's just kind of dumped in here. This is the raw JSON data. And it shows everything that we know about um, this particular image that we see above. It gives us a face ID, gives us the rectangle that bounded the face. It gives us, a, you know, how much of a smile is there. The head pose, the pitch of the head, the roll, yaw, uh, what gender, what age estimation. Do they have facial hair? Uh, are there glasses? And what is the emotion? And you can see this is what I was talking about on emotion. Anger, zero. Contempt is um, 0 0.005. But the, by far the, the biggest one is sadness at 0 0.994. There's also a very little bit of neutral in there. The next whole section is about the image. And then accessories are parts of the face covered. Um, and then what color hair do we have? And so in this particular case, um, it'll show a lot of, uh, so it's showing that it's a color red with a confidence of 94%. The other thing I've done is I've printed out those emotions on their own just so I could see them, the numbers associated with them, how many, um, or sorry, how many emotions are there? Is it sad or happy? The uh, expression, female, age, and this is the bounding box and the image height. When we look at the actual image itself, we've done the same thing. We've looked at, uh, we've anchored the text on the upper left-hand corner, which says the sex as well as the age estimation and then the emotion. So that's that particular example. And from there, what we can do is we can run another example. We'll switch over to the URL so we can show how that works. So to switch, all I have to do, uncomment the URL, recomment, the local and rerun it. Now you can see what it did here. Um, what we actually want to do is close out the window when we're done because otherwise we get an overlap. So if we close that out and rerun it, we'll get a clean result. So now this is a male estimated to be 34 and happy. The nice thing about the matplotlib is I can also zoom in if I want to get a better view. And when I have a set text size, the problem is these particular labels will, um, will grow and move unexpectedly. So by doing it this way and just anchoring them to the bounding box, 
we don't have to worry about that. So we'll go ahead and close this one again. And now we'll run another one. Let's look at Okay, I did not fix the uh, URL, so I'll go, go ahead and recomment out the URL, re-enable the local. Here's an image of uh, President Trump. It's doing the same thing. It's bounding that, uh, that image. And it looks like you're not seeing that. Stand by. Okay, now we've got our, uh, our image back. Sorry about that. So now we can see that in this case, we've got the president's picture. We do have an estimated age as well as the estimated sentiment. So we can close that down and we'll jump back and put another, another one in. Okay, there we go. So now we've got a, uh, another example, estimated to be a female, age of 32 and angry. And you can see that the bounding box has appropriately found uh, where her head is there. Okay, this time what I'm gonna do is I'll change it one more time and we'll look at my image. And disregard, I must have taken that one out of the folder. The last one I'll do is uh, former Vice President Biden. And it's because I want to show a particular function. Okay. In this one now, what we can see is that this image is actually quite a bit larger. We can see that the height is 2,204. Uh, this is kind of why I had to be very careful about the text size because it appropriately does the bounding box, but in relation to the size of the image, uh, the text is drawn according to how much space it takes up on matplotlib. So you notice though, when I zoom in, it will appropriately carry along to the right size. So that's kind of why I anchored the text the way I did. So you can see now I've uh, demonstrated that we can take a URL or a file. We can feed it a photo from either online or um, a local file. And it's going to tell me the age, uh, the gender, as well as the expression that's on the face of the uh, person in the image. So if there's any other questions, please feel free to reach out and ask in the comments.